John Bollinger with Premier Guitar, and here we are at Bad Cat Amps, and I'm with John Bingham, John Thompson. Guys, I can't thank you enough for having us here. Yeah, man. We're excited to have you guys here. We're very excited to have you here. Long time fan. A little while ago, I just reviewed the Black Cat and loved it. It kind of does. I guess what I loved about it the most is... Uh, I found you got real definition of every note, like you can define a chord. There's some, and I like the fact that my, when I'm on the neck, I have definition, but when I'm on the bridge, I, it's not that ice picky thing. There's still, there's clarity without the ice picky. So tell me how you crack the code on that. And, and tell me if I'm getting it right, because well, that's that as a player, that's what I heard. It wasn't either one of us, I assure you. It was uh, Peter Ahrens, who was our CEO and, and head of technical. I mean, the guy is an absolute amazing amp designer, right? And so when we brought Peter in here, the first thing we did is he tore down every sacred cow that I believed in and everything that I thought was awesome. And uh, he, we built these things from scratch, from the ground up, all four of them. Like, you know, the black cat, the hot cat, the cub, and the lynx. Right. It's, so right now, and you're, you, are, you have four models. Yeah. 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 Broke it down to the, the bare essentials. I mean, those are like the, the pillars of the company, right? The four main things. Sure. And they're in each are very different and unique in their own way, right? Yeah, I dig that because I, I, uh, I uh, when I walked in, I heard your staff just like doing the the most heavy thing imaginable, right. you know, <laughs> coming out of this room. This is, I guess, kind of your, your sound lab. The test room, yeah. Yeah, and then I plugged into to this and got that. It takes me right to you know, that kind of I don't know, like like where I live. Yeah. But they're all right here, but they're still the same DNA. Well, yeah, I think it was important to all of us that the DNA from Bad Cat was buried deep inside of these amplifiers while bringing forth modern utility, incredibly juicy feel at all gain and sort of levels. And um, yeah, so that note-to-note that -note definition you were mentioning a moment ago, it shines through on these and, and whether you're playing clean on a Les Paul neck position or you're playing screaming high gain like the Lynx is going to give you, it's, it's there. It's all there. Yeah. And recording-wise, these we're now plugged into the, the four heads and those are running through a 112 Bad Cat cabinet. Yep. But you also have these all in combos as well. That's right. Yeah. Right, and we're able to go between the four with this amp Pete switcher we have in the rack over here that was also designed by Peter. Oh, great, yeah. And, um, and no pedals, just uh, straight in hearing it. Okay, well. That's what we're doing today, yep. Okay, so I came in on the Black Hat, and this is, this is totally my kind of vibe. Now, how did you get here? Okay, so we had um, Bonnie Raitt's amp in for servicing, right? She was doing the record, the one that she won the Grammys for, right? God, right. Yeah. And so, so what was her, was there an older one? Uh, it was uh, around, I think it was made around 2010. Okay. She had an old car, yeah. Yeah. It's actually channel two of a black cat in a single channel amp with a mid-range control, right? Yeah. And uh, I had it in, and Peter was you know, kind of new to the company, so he's playing everything and trying everything out. And I said, hey, check this out, Peter. And we kind of set it how she sets it, right? And he was playing it, and he was like, struck by how much punch there was. He was like, this thing really just punches, and it has this great attack in the top end. But so then he started playing with it, and, and it, we didn't really care. For, sorry, Bonnie. We didn't, care for, <laughs> we didn't care for the way it gained up, right? Yeah. And we thought that the tone controls were too sensitive, right? It's like if you, if you get 10 and 2, anything beyond that, it wasn't really useful, right? And so his goal was like, how can I get that attack and that feel of that amp that she had, right? but yet be able to push it into gain territories and be able to you know, use the tone controls all over the place and get different sounds out of it. And then we, he did that, right? And then he did this thing with the channel too that just, I hadn't heard anything like it before. I was like, holy crap, Peter. <laughs> and, and then we, we were interviewing John to come in and work with us. And uh, he came down on a Saturday and plugged into this amp that was brand new and played, started playing Van Halen Fair Warning out of Channel 2, and I'm like, damn, this thing, that, it was pretty cool. It's got it all. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's great. It's pretty cool. And then, of course, he threw a tremolo in there, which was sort of like, you know. Nailed the tremolo, right? man. I'm really glad you guys yeah. added that. Uh, it's a bias modulated tremolo, completely analog circuit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I, I think, I, think um, I mean, with all humbleness, I mean, Peter just absolutely nailed 
nailed that amp. It's amazing, right? Yeah. Okay, that's beautiful, man. And actually, I've, I'm on the dirty channel, but I, would, I just want to flip over here to the clean one just for a second. And there's this and that tremolo, man. It's one. I never want to turn it off. It turns all my bad notes into good notes. <laughs> <laughs> And that definition, right? Yeah, it's got and it's got a unique tone circuit on this app where um, it's specifically designed to increase the mid range as you pull the treble back. Oh, really? So, like, if you're on a Telecaster bridge pickup and you're going, I want a little more thickness, so you just kind of move this back a little bit, and the mids kind of come out. You can hear it, but I'll, I'll show oh, you. Oh, let me do that. I'm gonna turn off this tremolo. Okay, so we're. Wow, man. Wow, that's really clever. Yeah, and that's kind of cool. It's a, neat, it's a neat tone circuit. So, okay, so although you don't have a mid range in it, it's there. It is there. Yeah. God, that's great. That's a really clever way of doing it. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a nice, it's a neat design. Yeah, because just rolling off your treble doesn't necessarily, on, on most amps, it's not going to. It just gonna, darkens it. Yeah, it, just start, it doesn't fatten it up, yeah, it yeah, just darkens yeah, it. Yeah. That's really clever. Okay, any other little Easter eggs hidden in here? Oh, well, we got built-in reverb. Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, and for that guy, one. the guy that wants it wet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God, man, that's and great. And there's a really nice buffered effects loop as well, so you can run long cable runs, and you know, yeah. it's never, it's super transparent. You run everything through it, and everything seems to sound really great in the effects loop. All right, so tube-wise, what are you doing on the Black Cat? Uh, it's two um, EL84s, right? So it's about it's about a 20 watt amp. Um, it's a loud 20. It's a loud 20 watts, yeah. But what's, what's interesting, though, is that, is that the, the original Black Cat, Channel 2, and Bonnie's amp, for that matter, was, had an EF86 in the preamp. And that was one of the sacred cows that, that Peter took a hatchet to, right, when he walked in the door. And he said that, you know, in, in his thick German accent, I, could, I can make it sound like an EF86, no problem. And so but, he, but why did he, why did he make the change, if he can get the sound either way, what because was the reason? They, uh, about 50% of customer service calls are EF86s that are microphonic, right? Right. Yeah, and when you, when you buy 100 you know, EF86s, you're going to fail 15 of them. Wow. In the process. Of so it's about durability, yeah. like roadworthy. Yeah, because yeah. they, they, they just choose to go microphonic at like the most inopportune moments. Yeah. And it's just, we wanted something that you could take on the road and beat to death and it was going to work every night. Right. Yeah, that's great. It's great that, that uh, he was thinking long term. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And was able to wrangle that tone that we were looking for, that little extra hyped high end, but without being harsh. Yeah. He nailed it, I think, on that, that design. So when you sent back Bonnie's amp, I mean, is she, is she still playing that one, or has she yes. changed this one? No, she's, she's using uh, hers offstage, but we just, we just delivered her a Black Cat, uh, like, I don't know, a week ago or so ago. Uh, a little <laughs> Grammy <laughs> present. There you go, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, well, she wanted a rig that she could take when she does, like, overnight fly dates and stuff. Yeah. And, I don't know if you want to tell the story or not, but but they were trying to put together a rig for her to play, you know, overnight shows and you know things. With it. They didn't want to bring her a rig with her. Yeah. And so her tech snuck a Kemper in there, <laughs> and they they profiled her amp in her settings. Yeah. And they didn't tell her that they had it on. And, and she felt she, it. She goes, "Whoa, hang on, what's going on?" And they go, "Okay, well, you got us." And they went back to her regular amp. She felt it, she right? Felt it, yeah. That's it, man. That's what. And now nothing wrong with for you. People that are into that, great. God bless you. Good, good on you. But that's what gets me. It's the feel, man. It never feels like like an amp, you know. It's in the hands, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I I think it's just I don't know. It's it's a. Uh, it's not like maybe they sound the same, but I know I play differently because it feels different. Mm -hmm. I guess, and that must be what she. I love the fact that she picked up on it right away. Yeah, they tried to sneak it past her. They, they knew she wouldn't go for it, right, if they told her. Uh, right, yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a cool story. Okay, love it. Now, let's go from here. Okay, so... so We're going to hit the Cub. The Cub, okay. Yeah, tell me about the Cub. The Cub is the, uh, the first project that Peter took on. The Cub was arguably probably your most successful product, would you say? Absolutely, and yeah. and my personal favorite that I've been playing for five years. So I was, needless to say, was really excited about him tearing it apart. Like, what are you doing? That's my favorite. <laughs> yeah, don't mess it don't up. Don't mess it up. <laughs> yeah. The intention on the Cub was being able to produce 
uh, an amplifier that was made for a variety of guitar players that didn't want to go through the option paralysis of having one switch for each individual thing. So it's a very streamlined one channel amplifier that has a built in boost. Cool. And so with this switch right here, when, when you kick on the built in boost, if you want, you can feel it now. Yeah, or yeah, we can yeah. let you do a playthrough. Yeah, let me do some. So there's your. So we're in the uh, cub now. Yeah. Okay, and now Bruce. Wow, man. Yeah, we wanted it to be like uh, fully functional for anybody that wanted to have a variety of gain sounds coming out of it. And there's also one little Easter egg buried in this, and that is that we've got a Master Volume 1 and a Master Volume 2, so you can set yourself up a solo boost if you want to do it that way, and that Master Volume 2 is controllable with the foot switch as well. Oh, God, that's great. Yeah, boost so, up for... You know, it's kind of amazing how it goes from that clean to dirty thing, and it still sounds like the same amp. Like sometimes yeah. those... When you go from clean to dirty in the same amp, it sounds like a different amp, you know. But this sounds just like a very angry version of, of the uh, same one. Oh, that's great, man. Yeah. Love it. And yeah. he did the same thing there that with the Black Cat where I was I was married to the EF86 channel on the Cub or the preamp on the Cub. Yeah. And he did away with that. And the Cub is kind of more the traditional, what you think of the early Bad Cat kind of sound, that sort of warm crunchy thick breakup you know that's not not super high gain but it's not real clean either right yeah though it does do a great clean sound yeah but, yeah 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 great great clean sound yeah clean with personality you know it's, it's a little more aggressive on the top end right i think yeah and it's that whole clarity thing Yeah, you'll great. be showing me that before we leave, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. This guy's um, about 30 watts yeah. and uh, EL34 power section. Okay, so although it's 30 watts, is it any louder than this guy? I think you get a bit more headroom out of it. Uh, yeah, I mean, that, that, that black hat's loud, man. Yeah, yeah. it is. It's yeah. shockingly, that's a shockingly loud 20 watts. Yeah, really you Because you can drown out a drummer if you need to. Easy. Yeah. 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 Which we should. <laughs> yeah, right? we should yeah, every yeah, now and then. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Just put them in their place. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, right, right. Right. Okay, that's great. And uh, effects loop in this one as well? Yeah, right. buffered effects loop as well. That's a cool yeah. feature. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. All right, love it. Now, where are we next? Do we want to hit the hot cat? I guess yes. we do. We do. Yes, oh, we we're do. gonna hit them all. John, yeah, we're 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 gonna hit them all. Let's hear it. This is uh, this is one that that I'm near and dear to. This is my personal favorite of the bunch. The hot cat basically covers. Uh, I, I like to say it kind of covers Brad Paisley to Adrian Smith. <laughs> That's how I put it. You know. Yeah. But like, you can get a nice, clean, chimey channel if you're running a telecaster through it is really snappy but then on channel two if you want to drive the gain it gets to like a classic metal territory especially yeah. if you're running it through like a closed back cabinet with right. v30s or something in it you're right there it's very very angry yeah and so for me uh yeah i absolutely love this one i'm gonna give this one my uh John Bingham's uh, gold, <laughs> gold star <laughs> Seal of gold award winner. Good, good. I, don't, I don't have my own premier guitar winner, you know, <laughs> badge, so I have to make my own up. Okay. But perfect. anyway, yeah, I love this one. This one is about 45 watts, and it's an EL34 um, power section. And yeah, it's just, uh, like I said, it's, it's super flexible. This is an incredibly versatile amp, and uh, I think we should play it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so where are we right? So we'll start you... We'll start you clean. Yeah. So we got nice clean. So 
we've got a low high switch on this one that takes and adds a gain stage and kind of alters the way the brightness okay. uh, in the amp responds. So we're gonna go there. Yeah. And then we'll kick it over to the second channel, the Jersey channel here. So it's nice and chewy, but when we kick in the high gain mode of this channel, you get a lot more out of it. Yeah, that definitely wakes up. Yeah, man. Wow. Come back a couple days later, it's still going. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, I love that. So, okay, so the multiple gain station uh, stages, that's just a great way to kind of nuance in your dirt. Wow, man. Yeah, two, yeah. two modes, two channels. Yeah, yeah. And they're both controlled by foot switch. Oh, great. Yeah, so it, it kind of almost responds like if it was a four-channel amp, you know. Yeah, That's yeah. That's why I like to look at it. Yeah, I love that. And, um, okay, so let's talk a little bit about durability because there's a, I guess that's a thing with, with well, with high-end tube amps, there's a, I mean, there's, there's a, <laughs> they're, they're a little vulnerable. Mm -hmm. When you guys retooled, you did some changes that kind of made them a little more, a little more roadworthy. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Like um, any of that jazz, you, any, any secret sauce you want to reveal to? Well, one thing that we're doing is we're using military grade PC boards oh. to do the whole circuit of the amplifier as opposed to doing um, meticulous like point to point just resistors kind of floating around inside of an open chassis yeah. soldered to each other. Um, this allows us to get higher gain uh, with lower noise right. more consistently, um, handles bumps on the road I think a little better. Um, but yeah, that's that's one construction thing that we did differently. We also changed up our testing procedures quite a bit. Huh. How's, what's, what, like, like what's that all about? Oh, John was here for that. I'm. Yeah. Well, yeah. we we just basically just abuse them and beat them to death. They couldn't leave here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they go on yeah. a vibration table. It just shakes the hell out of oh, them. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. Then oh, we, yeah. We, we burn them in for uh, 24 hours, and we have a little. <laughs> Peter's rigged up this little test jig that sort of records signal going through them onto like a, a DAW, right? Yeah. And then we're able to look back through it and see if there's any anomalies or anything strange, and we can kind of poke around and see what's going on. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. But they're and meant then, to be abused. Yeah, yeah. When, they're, when they're play tested, they're like picked up and dropped on the bench a handful of times. Uh, everything's turned all the way up. It's just, it's kind of like a, how do we reasonably try to make this break? Yeah. You That's know, great. obviously we could run it over with a car or something, yeah. but we try to break it within reason. And if it doesn't break, we're good to go. Yeah. That's right. And it's, it's amazing that, that it's that dirty. But the noise is no big deal for yeah. an amp that that is that driven. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's it's a uh, it totally reasonable amount of noise to it. Yeah, love that. And yeah, man. How many watts did you say this is? It's Forty-five. Okay, great. All right, and I guess that brings us to the fourth and final one in your uh, in your product line. Ah, uh, yes. The Lynx. That's it. That's an angry cat. Let's hear all about it. <laughs> The the Lynx has lived in the lineup for what since close to the beginning. Oh seven, maybe oh eight. Oh seven. Yeah. And it's it, it, it always had like a clean channel and a dirty channel, and the dirty channel was always very aggressive. Yeah. Um that level of aggression has been kind of ramped up tenfold in this thing. This guy it has That's a lot of aggression. It go it gets <laughs> it gets a lot of gain. I hope you're ready for your metal chops. Uh, yeah, uh, well, we're no. gonna get there. <laughs> <laughs> I have the tone. I won't have the chops. There yeah. you go. But um, yeah, so we still have a clean channel. 
Okay, the clean channel is made to fit like more of that vibe though. It's not like a real bright, springy, yeah. country clean. Yeah. More of a shoegazy yeah. clean. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. It's a good, reasonable, just a little bit of little bit of hair on it. Yeah. John just made it more of a country clean. Just adding some presence. Okay. Yeah. Well, he got me. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's the sweet side. Right. This this guy has um, a low and a high switch, just like the hot cat does. So we can we can add a lot of gain to channel one here. So you can go from this edge of breakup, sort of a clean, to more of what I refer to as like a classic high gain tone. Okay. And that's gonna happen right now. Yeah. And then when we go to channel two, this is, uh, we can kind of call it a modern channel. Well, I mean, it was, it was really designed with the guys who put an improper amount of string on the neck, right? Like yeah. seven and eight string yeah. guys. Yeah. That don't know how to, it's supposed to be E, right? But the, <laughs> somebody forgot to tell these guys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's a lot tighter. Okay. Are we there now? Yeah. And tons of gain. Tons. And did you see there's a um you should give me a Hendrix chord so you can hear the clarity. So the DNA is still there. Right. Yeah, that's that's that is pretty amazing. That is, I mean, that is that's dirtier than dirtier than I ever yeah, need to yeah, be. Yeah. But there is that absolute clarity. You can define a chord, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> yeah. Well that was I mean, he specifically went that way for that reason. Because like a lot of these newer bands, right? They play these like seven and eight string guitars, but they have these are crazy chord changes, right? Yeah. And you, you can't well, there's a lot going on there. You yeah. just can't. They're not like you and me with the, you know, playing fists, you know, yeah. all day long. <laughs> yeah, These yeah. guys are playing real chord changes. Over yeah, yeah. Heavy gain stuff. And did you say there's a, uh, a a noise gate on it? Yeah, we've got a variable noise gate. Okay. So okay. So. So, we've we've got yeah. This is all the way off. Okay. These are unpotted pickups. So you're Just gonna get that. Just I like them. So you're gonna get that. But yeah, we can clamp down on this pretty yeah, easily. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Oh man. We're a little, little too close. I think we're just too close. That thing's <laughs> okay, I don't yeah. even know if that'll work. Yeah, I'm. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm. I'm a little loud, just inches away. So, oh, you're right there. Yeah. Yeah, that, that squelches it right down. What a great feature to have, right? I and think I, so. And I love the fact you can just dial it, season to taste, yeah, yeah. where you want it. Or pull it completely out, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, that's great. Yeah, God, you guys, I, I like that you have, you've kind of have, in these four amps, I think you kind of have something for everybody. I think so. Hmm. Yeah. Lynx is 50 watt, EL34 based, like yeah. you would expect, right? Yeah. And combo or, or or you can get it in this and run it through and you both make the 412s the 412 cab 412s 212s 112s yeah 
It's got the variety pack. Yeah, and 212, we have them in an open back and a closed back. Oh, great. Yeah. I prefer the sound of the, the hot cat in the open back and the links in the closed back. Yeah. How cool that you have all those options. All right, so now we're with Peter Ahrens, who is the CEO and I guess chief designer. Is that correct? So you're the guy that's kind of behind the technical side of getting these these tones. Okay, here's my question for you. Uh, EL84s, I usually think of as a kind of a boxy thing, and these are not that. No, not not exactly. I mean. I mean, we're using mostly two different EL84 and EL34, but I know that people connotate those things with certain tones. Mm -hmm. But it, from my experience and from the way I approach design, um, it is not limited to that. I just go and get into the weeds of a circuitry and then try to find out what this basic circuitry can basically give me in order to get out the most of it. So I'm usually not going for a certain sweet spot or something like that in them, but I want the entire range of the of the control knobs functional in a way that it gives you all sorts of good sounds and not just rather than having just one particular spot. Sure. So that's a general, I would say, approach to, to designs I, I follow. So what made you move away from the EF86? Um, I mean, first of all, reliability issues. Sure. And microphonic issues. And then there is also, from my perspective, there's a lot of name dropping in terms of tubes as well. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, I just care about what sounds good. And if there are no tubes in it at all, well, then I don't build tubes in it at all. So it, it always goes, or everything follows the general approach of getting a great sound, something which I have partly in my head, but also which is partly in the circuit. So um, and an EF86, to get back to that question, is just not something you really need in order to get to a specific sound. People think that way. My opinion is different in, in, in that regard. So that were the reasons, or these were the reasons to move away from it. So what is your, what's your R&D process like? I mean, are you, are you, are you constantly playing yourself? Are you talking to other players? Or are you just... Uh... I have to I have to admit I don't talk a lot to players about that stuff because I have a like a like a giant library in my head I would call it of circuit designs over the past 60 years and um, I usually come up with a concept which I would like to see in an M that depends on several factors like form factor and uh, space and um, and user interface and something like that and then I try to um, adjust the circuit or the audio circuit and the, the feature set around that. Um, and then for sure I go for certain sounds, but that is depending on what kind of, of product I'm designing. You know, I, I did a lot of different brands in, in, in the past, or I worked for a lot of different brands in the past. So I'm not stuck to one particular thing. Um, I'm a nerd when it comes to guitar sounds in general. I love all sorts of guitar sounds. So what I'm trying to do is, well, if I go for something more like a, a British style amp or a, uh, an American style amp, I start with that. But usually, by the way I'm done, I, I moved away from that because I want to try to achieve something unique and something uh, different than what was there before. Great. So um, uh, I'm pretty excited about what's coming down the pike. Uh, some of the, do you want to hint at anything you guys have? Coming up. Okay, that's good. Okay, then there, there are some some stuff in it. You know, then we'll just find out what we it's find very out. Cool <laughs> stuff. Yeah, but I mean, well, in our in our situation, right? I know Peter's immense talent, right? He's always been utilized. I thought in the wrong way, right? It's like Peter, this is what we want you to do, right? You don't go to an artist and say, paint me a landscape with a. You know, you say, hey, here's your brush, go. Yeah, yeah. And that's kind of what we did here. We just got out of his way and let him do his thing, and he's and look what he's doing. That's what we, how we got together. However, I mean, it's it's tremendously helpful to uh, to study all these different designs, right? And to work for all these different designs. I mean, this is how you actually get to um, create an own voice. There's usually not not one artist or one designer or whatever who, which comes out of the blue, out of nothing. There are for sure. You're always inspired by things. There are always things which 
which intrigue you. So that's that applies to me for sure as well. So I'm trying to uh, suck everything out of of things I see around me. Sometimes it has nothing to do with with guitar amps, and they inspire me in a way. So that all uh, flows into into designs. Sure. How many amps do you think you're going to make this year? I know it's early in the it's early in the year. But what do you do? You have a goal or? A... There are three designs actually we're working on. Beyond and, these four. Yeah. Okay. Uh, or beyond these. Okay. Yeah. So and these are not reiterations of those in a different. So you know, black and in a fifty watt. Well, that, that's what I like about these. These are all very. Unique. They're all their own thing. Yeah. Yeah. They are. Did you did you check them all? Oh yeah. 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 Fun, yeah? yeah I love them all. This is my favorite. This is my second favorite. These are actually great, but yeah. they're not quite me. I, 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 <laughs> yeah. I need more in the clean, the yeah. crunch, yeah. Uh, the medium overdrive. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Now I get it. It's uh, well. That's that was one thing of what I wanted to achieve to address different style of players. Right. Yeah. Because to me, most of most of the things are happening in the in the amount of gain structure. I mean, some people. Uh, well, obviously, tend to towards higher higher gain sounds, some to lower gain. Um, but at the end of the day, every guitarist wants a good feeling sound. Yeah. A very responsive sound, um, kind of like uh, what I think you get from from an electric vehicle. Right? When, when people who drove an electric vehicle, when they when they kick the accelerator pedal, it's an immediate response. And even if you if you take it back, that it immediately breaks. I love this kind of thing, and I think that translates to to the guitar. Yeah. Well, the amps are electric too, right? <laughs> yeah. There we go. There we go. They got okay. rid of the gas powered. <laughs> yeah, the gas powered amps never no. never caught on. Not indoors. <laughs> <laughs> Your pilot lights uh, should yeah. be blue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is. I'm I'm so glad you had us here. It's great to see this creative environment where you guys are just chasing sounds you're not really i think it's it to me from an outsider it looks like your only real goal is to just find make great amps that do their own thing and yeah. you're not chasing something else yeah i i see that as our responsibility as uh as tube amp manufacturers or a tube amp brand um, versus the mostly the digital community because what we're doing is creating new sounds. I don't want to just administer old sounds right. and, uh, and and offer a new take on something, but rather have uh, new, entirely new sounds which uh, inspire people. Yeah, and it, and to me, the, what gets me is it, it's what's inspiring about it is the way it feels to play them. You know, the way it, it just feels it it it. At least for players like me, this is my comfort thing, where you can actually feel how it reacts to your fingers on the strings. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. there's a lot of good players in this building, right? From the shipping guys yeah. all the way through. Oh, I know, yeah. like this dude over here yeah, came in right. and he's ripping. Rob is <laughs> the Zep master. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rip. In fact, this is his guitar. Thank you very much. Yeah, but, but, but we just we listen to everybody, right? Everybody gets to play them, and Rob will come in and say, well, you know, I like this, or I don't like that. And Peter takes all that to heart, and he listens to everybody. And, and uh, I don't know that we pay a lot of attention to what's going on outside this building, really, to be honest. We, we sort of focus on our own thing. Way to, yeah, that seems like the way to do it, right? Yeah. Yeah, well, it's been great. I've, I've really enjoyed this, and congrats. I, I, uh, you guys are taking over the world. That's great. <laughs> thank you, Joe. Well, thank you for coming down. We appreciate that very much.